and welcome to another edition of Edu News 360 with me, Anita Yayoakweku. This is where we provide you with weekly updates on happenings in the educational sector. Coming up, Ghana Education Service releases new school placements for 2022 BEC graduates. Also in the bulletin, Vice President commissions National Children and Mobile Library after completion two years ago. The African Freelancer College offers one-year free training to 100 people to learn a skill in different fields. Joy Learning brings you more details of this in our News in Focus segment. Our focus is graduating to start up your own job. We have details for this and more here on Edu News 360. Read to Lead Library and ICT facility has been built in the Cote Township. The facility has a private study, an administrative office, ICT facility, and music instrumental chamber, along with a wide range of books to help students study. There is more in the following report. Libraries, ICT centers, and study areas play a vital role in supporting education and literacy, shaping new ideas and promoting creativity among school kids. However, in the Kote Township, pupils at various levels of education do not have the opportunity to enjoy these education advantages. The over 50,000 Read to Lead Library and ICT facility will provide the avenue for pupils to advance their learning and knowledge capacities. The facility has private study room, an ICT laboratory, administrative offices and music instrument chamber, alongside numerous books. Speaking at the grand opening of the library, founder of Read to Lead Foundation, Samantha Boatin, explained that she was inspired by the critical state of the educational system that gave rise to her. The facility will be equipped to provide additional services to nurture young people with soft skills. I come from a strong background of people who have been educated in the Kote education system, in the mass education system, and who have profited from it. So I wanted to give back to the community that has made me who I am today. So it just inspired me to also come back here and give back to my community. Students, if they are to come here, they're able to access not only books. Over time, we'll continue to offer courses like creative writing, dance, just things to engage students with in the community. Chief of Nyinahin Sukote, Nana Adubuama, was happy the facility will help improve education in the community. Education is not really valued, and with this, all communities around here will benefit. Every school kid who access this facility will forever be thankful. Ashanti Regional Director of Education, Willie Kwame Amankwa, appeared while calling on individuals to assist the government to provide quality education, employed teachers to play a supervisory role to ensure the aim of the gesture is achieved. My teachers, let today be a turning point. Take this kid as your children. And at the end of the day, 30 years from now, you see good people from Kote. Yes, Ramo. The Gambit me up, boy, am I a school? Nakoye, I buy in Yabio, but I buy in a ward in a swap. The facility is the third library in Kumasi to be established by the Read to Lead Foundation. The Ghana Education Service has released the 2023 academic calendar for all government schools. The calendar is purposely released for senior high, senior high technical schools junior high schools, primary schools, and kindergarten. The GES in all statements directed all regional directors in the country to ensure that heads of schools for basic and secondary cycle schools in their respective regions comply accordingly with the new academic calendar. Several disagreements have arisen about the new academic calendar. Some believe it is good to return to the previous calendar, while others believe that all stakeholders involved in the educational sector should have been consulted prior to the change. Teachers at Faith Kids Academy discuss their opinions on the new academic calendar. With my opinion, I think as a basic three teacher, I think I stand against the new calendar 
because the transition from basic three to four it's not that easy for the kids there's going to be a lot of pressure on us the teachers and the learners assuming you are teaching a basic three learner mathematics two plus two is supposed to be four so if we skip this and the learner goes to basic four how then is it going to continue from there so i think i stand against the calendar yes i stand against it because we should use our old one for the time being for them to catch up with our learning activities thank you mr Wajo talks about the limited time mr Ku, what do you think oh thank you mr dafo um for i think that the time that this thing was introduced our contact hours with the learners will be reduced we were looking at the time from january to august before the term will end the, the year will end for the academics which is very very bad it means that the time is very short things have to be piled up on, on learners which will be very, very difficult for the learners to to handle some may handle it some may not be able to handle it it will be a very big problem but uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do uh, as teachers Ms. Vaila, what do you think? Yes, I think it's a very good time, um, very good. But the timing is very wrong. Because um, for a whole year, we plan a calendar as what to teach in the classroom. But this time, the, the time is very limited and we are going to force pressure will be on the children to do well. And I think um, it didn't go well with us. With two teachers, we are going to be under very big pressure. Children are going to be under pressure. So for me, I don't think I go for the for it. I will speak for the new calendar that has been introduced by GS. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, last year saw the academic year ending in December. December is a festive season. Parents spend much, and then the new academic year started in January, which has put another pressure on the parents. But with the introduction of this calendar, we're going back to our September to August uh, system, which in September, there's nothing like expenditure from the parents to make on other things. So their concentration will only be on the learning materials, school fees of the children. So I think that it is a good idea that we all have to comply with and then we push it forward. Thank you so much. Thank you, teachers. We still have some more. Mr. Wana, what do you think? Thank you, Mr. Dafo. In fact, I side with what my teachers have just said, but mine is on the part of the teacher. Because the vacation, with the new one, the vacation is going to be about nine days. And already the teacher is exhausted with the old, or the new one. The teacher is highly exhausted. So when it happens like this, that means after spending so much time, dealing with the semester, we will just go back and spend only nine days and then come back. I mean, the, 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 the toll will be on us too much, too much. Already we were having th 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 three weeks of holidays and we couldn't even um, function with the three, three weeks because we saw it to be too small. Now it has been reduced to nine, nine days. So I, I, I think next time when such issues are being embarked upon, GES must try and then consult the teachers who are on on the ground because it helps a lot else it will it will affect the health the health status of the teachers that's why a lot of the teachers are backing out of the of, of the their education because of these things that uh, decision is taken unilaterally and then the teacher is not concerned so on my behalf and on behalf of my colleagues the teachers are saying that the vacation is not all that what uh, okay for it yes the days are very very short the days are very very con con considering the volume of work that we do within a term thank you very much thank you mr ona i think i side with mr ona um i'm also talking from the teacher's side and then um i'll say this from the kindergarten department i'm in the kindergarten department and then when the children are being brought from nursery to kindergarten we are to make sure that 
they learn how to copy from the board and then learn how to read how to put words together and then form sentences now that the academic calendar has been compressed from a year to nine months or so that's from january to august we have a lot of pressure on us and then getting the children to copy from the you have to make sure that at the end of the year the child is able to copy from the board the child is able to read at least simple sentences before the child moves to the next class i think it's a lot of pressure on us we have to put in all our best and then we are not also getting enough rest we will not get it at the end of the term we will only get a week to rest and i think that is not enough it will put a lot of pressure on us and when it comes like that it will affect the children as well thank you thank you very much um i like to talk about the short notice you see with calendars their job is to help you plan but when you get a calendar that with the normal calendars for example they normally come before the year begins before january when i have this calendar coming i think four or five weeks after the term has begun you've already planned what to teach for the term what to teach for the entire year actually but then you now have a new calendar compressed calendar coming with very 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 little time very little notice actually and quite sudden we i like to say with all of them to say it's a bit too much to bear at a go if it had been done gradually if it had been done say after covid a year to take take take, this, take things back sorry another year to basically ease into the new change but also sudden was without notice we'll see what we can do with it actually that's what we can say we saw we can do with it thank you very much here is what some students of faith kids academy had to say about this new academic calendar my name is Sanam Nicole Senyeja. I'm a JHS3 student of Faith Kids Academy. Yes, I've heard about the new revised um, calendar, and I think it has some positive and negative effects on us. Um, one negative effect of this revised calendar is that weak students who may not have a good understanding of what they are taught might struggle because teachers will go at a fast pace. My name is Sayam Drao de Lima and I am in Basic 6 Phronimos of Faith Kids Academy. I think the, the new academic calendar has issue on my parents. I have three siblings in Faith Kids Academy and, and during the one week vacation, my parents will have to struggle to raise money to pay all of the four of us our school fees. My name is Esther Frempo and I'm in JHS3 of Faith Case Academy of Excellence. Yes, I have heard of the new um, academic calendar and one effect of this revised academic calendar is that it has brought a lot of pressure on we students and we have to learn very hard and this might put stress on us. Thank you. My name is David Chum Agba. I'm in JHS2 of Faith Kids Academy. Concerning the revised calendar, I feel like the teachers may not have enough time to finish all their subjects before the next term begins, which may cause a lot of confusion and disorganization. The new curriculum has shortened our holiday because at first I used to travel to my cousins and nephews, but now because of the new curriculum, I cannot travel to my cousins and nephews. One positive effect of the academic calendar is that after the COVID-19, we're forced to do a carol service and graduation ceremony together in December. But now that the academic calendar has been revised, we can now do our carol service in December and have our graduation ceremony in July. Before the COVID, the academic calendar was supposed to begin in July and end in September. But due to the COVID-19 virus, it began in January and end December. Therefore, it wasn't anything really bad. But now, because of the new calendar, we have to go back to what we're doing before, which is a worldwide term. So we are going back to the old normal. I was told that the duration of the vacation was just for one week, which is giving us small room to sleep or rest and this can also affect us mentally. Speaking with Cassandra Chum Ampofo, head of public relations unit of GES, she explained why GES decided to use this new academic calendar. 
I must say that this is not the first time we are using the transitional academic calendar. You know, um, when we started double track, we said that at a point we will be going off the double track when infrastructure is improved in the various senior high schools. Mm. And so it got to a time that we felt that most of the schools were falling off because their infrastructure were also ready. And so those that, the few that were left, we termed it as transitional because we are moving away. Now, the previous calendar where we had green and gold, so for example, where we have a particular level, say this form two, which has been the, the bone of contention here, form twos, you have probably green in school and maybe gold at home. You can have it vice versa as well. And so this transitional calendar does not divide a particular year group into two. But rather, if it is form two, all form twos are out, all form ones are in. If it is form threes, all form threes are out, then all form twos are in. So at no point in time T would we have all the three levels, that is form one, form two, form three, in a school, specifically to those using the transitional academic calendar. And these are some of the oversubscribed schools that the numbers are many. And we are hoping that gradually we would go off the, uh, the, 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 the structure completely. So now the form two issue here is that parents are worried. And I want to assure them not to be worried because though they went to school on the 10th of January and they are coming back home on the 17th of February, giving room for Form 2 to also go on, and um, Form 1 to also, I mean, start school on the 20th of January. That doesn't mean it's going to affect their academic color or the 100, um, the, 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 the instructional hours or contact weeks that we have stipulated for them to have within the academic year. When you look at the calendar critically, you would realize that getting to the end of the Form 2 academic year. They have a long period there, and that is where we intend to make up the lost time that they feel they are losing at this point in time. So now they have to come out for first years to come in. At a point, you, you will see that the 14th, I guess, that they would be in school. So they will go on the 11th of April and then come back um, 11th of April to 1st of June, and then 2nd June to 13th, I guess, they will be home. Now, the 14th, I guess, that they will be in school. At the point, the Form 3 would also complete around September. And then the 14th, I guess, they're about to. Form 1s will not be in school because their break would be on the 10th of August. The 18th of August that the Form 1s would, the Form 3s would have by then completed their WASI and then they will be out of campus, making room for the Form 2s to fully have um, their full um, um, contact with or instructional hours. And so, um, yes, we do understand their concerns. I must say that um, going to school or preparing for your ward in January and then February, they are coming back, and more so because we published the academic calendar maybe two weeks after reopening. We had to do that because we had a series of engagements with our stakeholders, particularly our teacher unions. And so the very day that we even published or we released this academic calendar, we were, we were just out of a meeting with the leadership of the teacher, not teacher, but the pre tertiary education union, because Tewu is also part of the <coughs> unions that I'm talking about. The placement for BEC candidates who graduated last year has been released by the Ghana Education Service. The Director General of the Ghana Education Service, Dr. Eric Nkansa, made this known at a press conference that out of 547,329 candidates who sat for the examination, only 538,399 qualified for school placement. According to him, some 165, 601 candidates are undergoing self-placement because they could not be matched to their school of choice. There is more in the following report.
the Director General of the Ghana Education Service, Dr. Eric Nkansa, made it known at a press conference that out of 547,329 candidates who sat for the BUC examination, only 538,399 qualified for the school placement. However, 165,601 candidates will have to do self-placements because they could not be matched to their school of choice. For the start of the academic year, the service recommended first-year students to report to class on February 20th, 2023. The 2023 Computerized School Selection and Placement System, CSSPS, for senior high schools and TVET school site will be going live any moment from this minute. Out of the 547,000 329 registered candidates, 538,399 candidates qualified to be placed. So far, a total of 372,780, representing 69.24% of the qualified students have been automatically placed in at least one of their choices. However, 165,601 candidates representing 30%, 30.76%, could not be matched with any of their choices. All such students are therefore to do self-placement to select from the available schools. Per the calendar for 2023, the academic calendar for 2023, the first year students are to report to school on February 20, 2023. So from next week, February 20, students can report to schools for registration and possible orientation for academic work to commence on February 27. Vice President Dr. Muhammadu Baumia has highlighted the impact of reading on primary school pupils across the country. Speaking at the commissioning of the National Children and Mobile Library in Accra, the Vice President indicated a lot of progress has been made since his administration rolled in interventions to help cultivate the habit of reading in basic school children. Here is Anita Yayoi's report read to you. To improve education and reading among children in Ghana, the National Children and Mobile Library was initiated in 2015. The National Library that has just been commissioned was done by the Social Security and National Insurance, SNIT, in collaboration with the Ghana Library Authority as a way of fulfilling its corporate social responsibility. This is the 13th library in the Greater Accra region. The state-of-the-art facility was eventually launched for public use after being stocked with 22,000 books, 50 computers, 24 tablets and other facilities to help children who have visual and hearing impairment. According to the Vice President, the percentage of children in primary two who can read has increased over the years. Government has helped increase the number of public libraries from 61 in 2017 when we came into office. We've increased the number of public libraries from 61 to 115 at the end of 2022. A survey in 2015 found that only 2% of primary two students, only 2% could read in 2015. He said the survey that was conducted last year shows that 25% of primary two students can read. The board chair of the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, Madame Elizabeth Ikuya Ohine, also stated why SNIT would put pensioners' money into such a project, hoping 
that the government would not abandon the maintenance of the project. Questions have also been asked. Why would SNET put pensioners' money into something like this? Why? Well, today's children are tomorrow's pensioners. And those of us who are pensioners know that to be able to have a comfortable pensioner's life, it starts very much from how prepared you are as a child. The executive director of the Ghana Library Authority, Hayford Xiao, also stated why the project was not launched right after its completion. Construction started in 2016. The library was officially completed and handed over to the Ghana Library Authority in October 2022. Of course, a lot of people had seen that the building has been painted and our logos and colors were on it. That was how come people became agitated and they felt that the library building has been completed. But it had not been completed. There was a lot of work that was going on inside. We needed to bring in some equipment from outside the country and all of that. So all of those processes is what has taken the library authority from 2016 uh, to now to be able to have it ready for the use of the public. The vice president rewarded some school children who took part in the vacation e-reading challenge with laptops. You are still watching Edu News 360. We shall take a quick break and when we return, we'll bring you our news in focus segment. <laughs> 